In this video, I'll give you a brief summary of some of the main new features in Lightroom 5. Let's start with the Library Module. The Library Module is where you edit, cull, and organize your images. The Library Module is where you edit, cull, and organize your images. In the Library Module, you can also apply quick develop settings to multiple images, do basic video editing, apply keywords, and view and edit metadata. Most of the changes to the Library Module are not so obvious but they contribute to making the user experience more satisfying. Probably the most significant addition to the library module and to Lightroom in general is the capability to create so-called smart previews. Smart previews are much more than just previews. They are highly compressed DNG files, more than 10 times smaller than the original file, which means you can, if you want, store them on your internal hard drive, keeping them with you at all times. Unlike offline files, Smart Previews can be edited in the Develop module. OK, let's move through some of the other new features in the Library module. I really like that you can now just hit the F key and go into full screen mode. I think that's really cool. I also like that we can display a grid and a guide overlay. Let me show you how to do that. That's under the View menu. And then we have now a loop overlay grid that we control by just holding down the command or control key. And we can control the size and the opacity here, just clicking and dragging. We also have, under View, Loop Overlay, let me get rid of the grid, and we have the guides. And here, once again, by holding down the command or control key, we can set the guides where we want. Turn that off. Another cool feature that's not so obvious is the lock view. Let me show you how lock view works. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the loop view here. And I'm going to scroll over to a part of an image that I know that I want it to always come to. So I want the image, whenever I hit loop view, to go right to this spot. Under view, lock zoom position, watch what happens now. Let's say I'm over here uh, viewing other images. I go to the loop view. And now I use my right arrow key. I move to this image. And I hit the space bar. And I'm going right to the one-to-one -one view that's set in my navigator. But I'm going right to the place that I've locked. Uh, that can come in really handy, especially when you have places that you always want it to zoom into. So let's move over here to the left side panels under Collections. When we build a Smart Collection now, we have a bunch of new criteria besides having a smart preview. We can also now build smart collections based on size and even the bit depth. This is new. So let me go ahead and cancel that. So there's a new import preference. Let me show you how you get to that under Lightroom or Edit and then Preferences. Here under Import, you see the second option, select the current previous import collection during import. This is brand new. When this option is checked, you're shown the newly imported photos in the grid view in the library module. When it's unchecked, the photos are still imported. But let's say you were working in another view, in another collection, say. It'll stay there rather than going into the new view showing all the newly imported images. It's going to be really popular with people who <laughs> got tired of Lightroom popping out of a current view. That, let's say you're working in one collection, and then at the end of an import, you were taken out of that. So by deselecting this, that old behavior will no longer exist. OK, now let's turn to the Develop module. I'm going to get there by just selecting the D key. And the first thing you may notice is that you can work on images faster when you bring them into the Develop module. You don't have to wait for a full-size preview to be generated anymore. So you can go right over to the right side panel and start working on the image, even before the full-size preview is generated. The big news in the Develop module is the new radio filter and the upright commands. The radio filter is right here. And with the radio filter, you can now apply Lightroom local adjustments to a circular mask with a feathered fall off. Believe me, it's really, really cool. So the other thing is down here under the Lens Corrections panel. And there's a couple new options here. First, you can see there's a Basic tab where we didn't have that before. 
And let me find an example to use the new upright commands on. But let's just say I want to correct this uh, keystoning that's occurring because I shot up at this building. So I'm going to, first of all, enable profile corrections. That's just something we could do in the previous versions of Lightroom. But now watch what happens when I select Auto. It's going to automatically correct for all the perspective problems that this image has. And if I select Constrain Crop, it crops it for me. So this is going to be really, really handy for many of you. So another improved feature in the Develop module is the Spot Removal tool. So before, when I select the Spot Removal, uh, I could use the circle and then just resize the circle. Let me go ahead and pick a spot over here, click on it, and it would automatically either clone or heal that spot. But now, with Lightroom 5, watch what I can do. I don't have to be constrained to a circle. I can click and drag and basically brush in any shape I want. And it will do the healing based on, on that selection. Now, this is another really cool feature in the Develop module. Over here in the Book module, you'll see that it has been fine-tuned. For example, the way you add text now is much more intuitive. And you can add page numbers as well. Over here in the Slideshow module, you can now incorporate full motion video along with your stills to a slideshow. I think that's really cool. Well, as you can see, there are many new useful features in Lightroom 5. I have not gotten to all of them. This has just been a brief survey. Lightroom just keeps getting better and better and better.